Hey guys, Jim Hoffman here for EMS SEO. Um, today, I want to do this quick Facebook Live. I just did a, uh, a presentation where they talked about using the elevated left ventricular assist device and it's a 45 minute or so lecture. And what I want to try to do today is just kind of break it down a little bit into maybe 10 minutes so that we can, you can kind of get the gist of it and I'll give you a link to the web, actually the LVAD website. Let me just put that here right now. I had to put the link that I have so that you can get it right to the EMS part and you can actually look this up after the Facebook Live here. Okay, so let me put that here. Boom. Okay. So we talk about um, the LVAD devices, right? Um, and a lot of times when we get unseen and you kind of start freaking out because the patient has got all kinds of wires and batteries and straps and harnesses on them and you start kind of freaking out, you know, and not sure what to do uh, when it comes to these devices. Luckily, we don't have that many people out there we come in contact that have these, uh, but they are out there and they are, of course, increasing. Right, and the amount of patients that we might deal with. So some things that should give you some comfort is that most of the time the patient, a family member, is very, very um, educated on their device and the system and the alarms and all that type of stuff right before they even leave the hospital. So that's one thing that they can actually help you figure out what's going on with the patient, okay, especially if the patient might be in cardiac arrest or the device might not be working. In addition to that, there's also contact numbers for coordinators and things like that that are attached to that patient and that LVAD device. That can also help you as well. And there's also plenty, I'm sure, plenty of documentation there on that device as well. One of the main questions that you get a lot is, can you do CPR on these patients? And the answer is yes, but that's for the LVAD device, not a, not a, <clears throat> not a, um, a, uh, a total artificial heart. We're talking about the LVAD device um, is that you can do CPR. However, how are you going to know when to do it, right? Because the majority of devices do not, the patient will not have a pulse, right? The non-pulsatile devices. So a patient won't have a pulse in, with these devices, right? So what you want to do is if they don't have a pulse, if before they start CPR, one, of course, make sure they're unresponsive, right? You want to make sure that they're not breathing, okay? And you might be able to you actually defibrillate them one time before you can start CPR, okay? So a little bit different than you might do if you have got a patient who's unresponsive who does not have an LVAD device in place, right? You'll just check for a pulse and then start pumping away. But with these patients, you're going to want to make sure that they are unresponsive and that they're not breathing before you start CPR. Um, the other thing that I want to kind of point out that a lot of the stuff you're going to come in contact with these patients too are things like their uh, uh, complications that are involved with these types of things, right? Bleeding, um, infection, pump failure, thrombosis. These are the things you might want to look out for more with these patients because you're right, the patients might actually be awake and talking to you and all, and it might not be anything to do with the actual, um, you know, the, the, heart, the heart failing where you're going to do CPR it might be more in line with a device issue, right, itself, um, or things that go along, the complications that go along with that, okay? Uh, keep in mind, these patients are also on uh, uh, anticoagulants, very, very heavy on the blood thinners, okay? So you got to be careful with that bleeding, Okay. Um, because that, that can be very significant. So, of course, fluid is something you might want to go ahead and, you know, consider giving these patients, okay, if they have any kind of uh, blood loss, okay? So just some of the stuff to keep in mind. I'm, I'm not going to go deep into it. Like I said, this is very, very quick. Um, I want to kind of just kind of touch on this so that you know you're going to a house, you've got a patient on the LVAD. One, keep in mind the family, the patient, documentation, contact numbers are all there available for you as a resource. So use it, right? They're going to be more educated about this thing than you are, okay? The second thing is, is that, yes, you can do CPR with LVAD devices, okay? 
Um, you can defibrillate with LVAD devices. You can give ALS medications with LVAD devices, okay? Of course, you want to watch pad placement. You're not going to place the pads on top of batteries or on top of wires, okay? Um, you know, common sense stuff, right? But, <clears throat> but, but you can do CPR, but the thing before you start CPR, make sure that the patient is unresponsive and that they are not breathing, okay, before you start CPR, okay? Um, those are the key things. And the other thing, and again, the other takeaway I want to do is to keep a lookout for the, for the um, complications with these types of patients, the bleeding, okay, the dysrhythmias, uh, thrombosis, stuff like that, okay? Just kind of key elements that you can kind of zero in on if you come in contact with these types of patients, okay? Um, the complete uh, heart, the total heart, um, uh, <clears throat> the the um, total total artificial heart device um, is different. You're not going to do CPR on these patients, okay? Um, because it's not going to do anything for that patient, okay? Um, that's a whole different thing. But we're talking about LVADs in particular here. So next time again, if you ever do get an LVAD patient, just remember that you can do CPR, but they have to be unresponsive, of course, and they should not be breathing before you start CPR. Because if you check for a pulse, that most of them are not going to have a pulse, okay? Um, the non pulse dial devices that might have some patients might have a very, very weak pulse because of a, a, a ventricular kick that's kind of left over um, before the device is put in. But most patients are not going to have a pulse, okay, uh, with these devices. If you want to get some more information, guys, like I said, um, putting this link here in the uh, notes, you can go right to mylvad.com and you can download a field guide on this stuff okay uh and give you some more information i just posted that in the notes here um and that's it guys I, listen like i said 10 minutes or less i want to break it down i don't want to go over the tubes and where they go uh, who gives a shit right the bottom line is what are we going to do when we come in contact with these patients right we're going to do what we have to do as far as the you know the, the actual lvat itself Okay, so let's not get wrapped up in a type of tubing and, and all that type of stuff. We know it's left ventricular. We know that's where the tubes are, are attached. There's lots of wires and batteries and straps and stuff all over the place. That's what we need, you know, that's the stuff. We're, we're, we know a lot of stuff already. Okay, the bottom line is we're focusing on the patient and what's going on with that patient. Okay, and don't forget, family, patient themselves, and their contact numbers and documentation is going to be there. Much more information uh, that's going to be available to you at the scene if you come in contact with these patients, All right? So if so you get a patient like this, take a breath, know you want something here on it. Maybe you've checked out this field guide I posted, okay, to help you go ahead and uh, know more about these devices. Um, hopefully your agency keeps a track of patients in your area who have LVAD devices so that you're kind of a heads up so that if you get dispatched to this, it already tells you that you respond to a patient who's got a device like this in place and you kind of have a heads up and now you kind of mentally prepare when you get there um, that you're going to see an LVAD device. Guys, that's it for me. Um, uh, if you like this type of stuff, guys, this type of education, want to keep building your knowledge base, go check out my members-only site. It's at pebbermedic.com. I'm going to give you a link here for that as well. Uh, it kind of explains everything about TurboMedic, guys. Um, again, it's really there to build your knowledge base, make you a better provider. There's gigabytes of download, there's hours of audio, hours of video, there's practice exams, all geared to make you a better EMS provider. I'm going to go ahead and put that link here if you're interested, check that out, um, and join me and about uh, 500 or so other members there. Okay, I'm actually going to pin this to the top so you can see it um, as needed. And... Um, that's it. That's it for today, guys. It's a great little Friday. It's cold out here where I am, but the sun's out, which is a plus. Um, I hope you guys have a great uh, Friday and a great weekend. Um, and, of course, that you stay safe, right? That's number one. So, all right, guys, that's it for me. I am Jim Hoffman for EMSSEO.com. Stay safe.